Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to go over a quad exercise, at least in terms of the specific variation that I'm going to show you that you probably haven't tried. And we're going to go over why mechanically, biomechanically speaking, uh, it's going to target the quad so well. And so hopefully you'll learn something from a principled standpoint and not just a sort of exercise memorizing standpoint. So let me just show you the motion. At first glance, it will appear as if it's just a normal hack squat, okay? But the key distinction between this and a normal hack squat is what you see right here in the foot placement. Now, I'm just going to say that right off the bat, before we jump into the principles, be careful with this. If you're going to do this, make sure that this plate or whatever you happen to place here is very stable. It's not going to wobble. It's not going to slide upward and downward with heavier loads, right? If you're concerned at all about balance, at all about safety, use the regular foot plate um, and, and just deal with it not being as quad dominant, right? That's a sacrifice that you can make or just find another way to, to mimic the concepts we're going to talk about. Okay, with that out of the way, I like to use a plate to do this. You can use some other kind of heel wedge or heel elevation, and I like to place my feet nice and narrow, right? So they're basically kissing. And the reason that this is going to make it so much more quad dominant than a traditional hack squat is because of what happens as I start to lower in this motion. So if my normal feet were here. The first thing that you would recognize is a big difference is the starting point of my ankle. So recognizing that this specific angle right here is starting really open is going to set us up for a ton of success in relation to the quads. Why? Because to train the quads, we need a couple of things to occur. Number one, we need this whole shin bone to travel pretty far forward such that our knees are moving towards our toes and then number two and you know probably more primarily we need to set up a force direction such that when we get to the bottom of this motion and through most of the middle of this range we have a force that is really far from the knees so this is just a guess as to where the force might be but if we identify this as the force direction this line in this second green line here that's 90 degrees from that line as the distance from that force direction to the knee you can see that if again this line is this way Look how long that line is to the knee and how short that line is to the hip, right? And the difference between these lines, in short, without getting too technical, just basically makes it so that because this longer line exists to the knee, there's going to be a lot more what's called torque imposed on the knee. In other words, there's going to be a lot more tension that our quads need to create as a consequence of this position. And in simple, sort of less jargony terms, what we want to ultimately aim for in any quad dominant squatting motion, be it a hack squat, a leg press, a free weight squat is we want to basically just think about uh, a motion which allows us to drop our butt directly toward our heels. You can think about that concept simply in another way where basically we have this segment here called the femur, this segment here called the tibia fibula, right, the shin, and these two segments, they just need to get smushed into one another, um, kind of like, you know, you're, you're opening and closing a scissor to make anything quad dominant. And really what that minor difference in setup or apparently minor difference in setup at the feet does is it allows us to do this motion, perform this motion with relative ease in terms of actually setting this up to be super quad dominant. So again, main principles here, you set up a plate and if you don't have the plate again, you can just put your feet on the normal platform um, and use some kind of heel elevated shoe or put maybe just some smaller plates underneath of your heels so that number one, this angle of the ankle starts in this very open position and number two, so that when you lower down, you start to lower down, you get to this bottom position, right? You see this really, really long distance from this line of force all the way to the knee and a shorter distance to the hip and again, Put more simply, you put yourself in a position where your butt is dropping straight to your heels so that where you're pushing through in your toes and your feet is basically just as far as possible in this particular context from the date. Now, something that many of you will realize is once you get to this position, a couple things will happen. Number one, the amount of load that you're going to be able to put onto the bar is substantially lower. That's perfectly fine. Why? Because you're isolating these muscles to a much greater degree. You're not distributing as much force through muscles like the glutes or muscles like the adductors, specifically the adductor magnus, which can really help you uh, in a quote unquote sort of normal hack squat, where imagine in a normal hack squat, your legs might end up here, right? Where the force is kind of much closer to your knee over here and much farther from your hip. 
Okay, so you can do a hack squat and it, it can be very, very glute dominant as opposed to quad dominant for that reason. And so you basically want to set yourself up in a position, even if you have a different hack squat than I have, a different you know capacity to set up a plate or a heel elevation or not, you can basically just come back to that first principle of, am I basically using an exercise setup which allows you to drop the butt to the heels? And if you're not, you're not going to be uh, creating a ton of force, again, of this femur pushing into this shin and vice versa. Because again, if you think about what the quads would do in this position, you know, imagine your foot were off the ground and just picture a leg extension, right? Your quads would basically just move your shin in this direction. So that's kind of almost what you wanna mimic is basically like a leg extension slash squat. And so in turn, what you'll ultimately feel as a consequence of all the things we've talked about so far is you will feel a lot more relative foot pressure toward the front of your foot as compared to the back of your foot. Why? Well, because that is essentially where you're going to need to shove to or shove through if your butt is falling in this direction, right? If it's falling kind of horizontally, think about where the pressure would need to be in your feet. It would need to be closer to the front of your feet so you could kind of push backward. So the last thing I'll say, and this is more on account of execution, is just make sure that you are intentionally putting a lot of pressure through the balls of your feet. A lot of people, what will happen when they do this kind of thing is they will encourage themselves to push harder through the heel. When in reality, your ability to keep your heel down is actually a matter of you having a proper um, uh, foot pressure and intent to create foot pressure in the spot that is required of you in the exercise. In other words, your heel is only going to come up if you don't have appropriate pressure through the toes. If you try to actively push too hard through your heels and you have this you know, exercise setup that's really encouraging the butt to go forward and thus uh, is encouraging pressure to go through the front of the feet, well, then you're basically just trying to fight the mechanics and the forces of the exercise. And not only is the exercise going to feel just kind of wonky and like it isn't really targeting what you're trying to target, Uh, but you're also just going to be super off balance, right? You're not going to be able to actually drive through the foot, which would allow you to push backward in this direction, which again would ultimately allow you to create that nice long distance, that nice long moment arm, and thus torque around the knee. So from a first principle standpoint, again, just to backtrack very briefly, you want to start with a position with an open ankle. You want to have your feet relatively narrow. And as you lower down, you want to be able to put yourself in a position where you can seamlessly drop your butt to your ankles and keep foot pressure through the toes such that you can push directly backward into this thing and not imagine anything in relationship to driving through the heels. Because again, this is not supposed to be a heel dominant setup and a heel dominant motion. And I guarantee you, if you've never done anything like this, your quads will be absolutely torched. Again, be conservative with the load to start and make sure that you're not using so much load that you have to kind of change the, the, the constraints of the setup here. This is set up so that you won't have to use as much load so that it can go all to your quads and really uh, negligibly to your hips. So if you found this helpful or interesting and you want to learn more about biomechanics, you're interested in sort of what underlies all the concepts that I'm talking about, check the link in the description. I have a 30-day beginner biomechanics course. It'll take you basically from zero to hero with learning all this biomechanics stuff. So if you're interested in learning more and you don't have any experience and you're kind of worried about jargon, check that course out. It has no boring lectures, no like textbook related things. It's all going to be application based. So it's really going to help you navigate uh, decision making and things like we're talking about in this video in terms of exercise setup and exercise execution to accomplish your goals more specifically. So I hope that helps and I'll see you all in the next video.